are back. It's the voice, the finale, the moment has come. What a night of music. What a great season, great artist, but it's gonna come down to these two right here, Sundance Head and Billy Gilman. One of their lives are about to change forever. Let's not waste any more time, let's get to it, here we go. excited to have you on Build. Uh, that was a cool video, but I'm like, who was more excited, Blake or Sundance, when, when they announced you as the winner? I think Blake was. <laughs> that was awesome. What did that moment feel like? If you can kind of go back and, and tell us what it felt like to be announced the winner of The Voice. Well, I thought that uh, Billy was going to win, really, so I was very surprised. And... Uh, I really don't know. I, I mean, I haven't uh, had any time to reflect or anything, so I don't know how I feel about it yet. <laughs> Are you still like, oh, I won this show? Uh, yeah, I keep, I keep having to remind myself that, you know, but I haven't really slept since then, and I hadn't slept two weeks prior to that. <laughs> so. And a little bit of a fog, yeah. but the best kind of fog. I mean, this you guys had this, uh, this year's competition, and the contestants were outrageously talented. It was amazing. Um, were you ever, you know, sort of threatened, or did you feel like very nervous to be with this, you know, stacked group of people? No, I always, uh, I always felt like I was doing well. I just didn't uh, have the social media followers that Billy and Roy had, so that's why I thought that they would win. Yeah, but then you know, that night before, uh, after the final, your th three of your singles were the top of the iTunes charts. So I was like, I think Sundance might come away with a big W. Yeah, that's when I thought for sure I'm, I might win, and then I really got scared just thinking about what I have to do, you know, like fly to New York <laughs> on a red eye. So. Yeah, what has it been like for you to kind of be thrust onto this, you know, this stage with all the spotlight, and now you're on a press tour, and uh, it must be a different change. Well, I'm, I'm very excited to have the opportunity uh, just to do these interviews and, and try to engage with more people. And uh, I'm really excited to sign the record deal and make an album that uh, we can put out. Hopefully, I want to make a record, you know, that will stand time. Of course, everybody wants to do that. But I really think right now that uh, the Lord's blessed me with uh, uh, a really fortunate event. Uh, the Voice and NBC uh, let me do that this summer. And. I knew that it was my time to really just kind of take it if I was going to do it. And uh, so I really worked really hard all summer, and it looked like it paid off for me. Sure did. You won. You won the voice, by the way, Sundance. I know. My <laughs> wife has the trophy. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Was it difficult for you to be away from your friends and family during this, you know, all these months? Yeah, the hardest part was just being away from my kids, really. Uh, but they would come in every Sunday, and I'd see them, and... Uh, that was my favorite part of the show, is just uh, knowing that Sunday they were going to come in. Yeah. Uh, so, and then uh, when I found, they told me that I might be able to play with Kiss if I made it to the top four, like three weeks before. So then I was like, well, I've got to, I've got to make it to the, <laughs> to the top four at least, just so I can play with Kiss. And then, uh, so we see how that turned out. That was amazing. That was an awesome moment. Did you guys watch the finale when Sundance performed with Kiss and Miley Cyrus was up there like, ah. <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah, can you talk to us? Of course, we all want to know what the coaches are like behind the scenes. Did you really work very closely with Blake Shelton and did you get to know the other coaches at all? Well, yeah, Blake and I, we worked a lot together and uh, I got to know him really well. Um, I didn't really work with any of the other coaches, but 
I did speak to them, you know, when I had the opportunity to, and they would also come over and engage in conversation. They were very polite and uh, very nice. Uh, I love Alicia Keys, and and the first time I seen her, it was like, it was it was like uh, something you know crazy, like that first crush, and then she actually talked to me, and it was like, uh, you know. <laughs> I didn't realize how beautiful she actually was, like in person, even without makeup and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. she's she's smoking hot, by the way. <laughs> and she can sing. Oh my god, she's so talented. Yeah. I feel like this season was awesome with the addition of Alicia and Miley. Like, had you watched The Voice uh, before actually auditioning for it? No, I, I've never really watched it. Uh, my wife kept telling me about it, and then she's like, "Hey, I think you need to go audition for this." And uh, I didn't really want to do it because I was kind of scared of failing, you know. Uh, we just released a record back in Texas called Soul Country, and we we're finally starting to get some radio airplay. And so the record, uh, the record people in, in Texas, they were starting to give us a little respect. And I was really nervous about coming out here and them finding out I tried out for the show and then possibly getting cut or whatever and then having to go back home and ask them to consider me legit, you know? I just knew it wasn't gonna work, so I told Misty, this is, if we're gonna do this, then it's either we're gonna have to go all the way with it or not do it at all, so. So after a lot of prayer and uh, consulting with my family, we decided to, to do it, and I wanted to show my kids that if you're passionate about something, you, you should go out and you know try to achieve it, even though it's a little late for me in the game, but I really think that God put this in my life at the right time. I, I, haven't, I haven't been prepared, and I wasn't prepared before when I had opportunities. Uh, so I'm just really glad that I was paying attention to uh, the signs that I've been getting from the world lately and uh, trying to focus on uh, just becoming a better artist, person, singer, and songwriter, and that's what I've been doing over the last two, three years. Yeah. Well, I think that's what's so wonderful about The Voice is that it doesn't matter your age or where you've been or what kind of experience you've had, it gives you an amazing platform. Um, when you first went out to audition, were you, you know, after the audition, do you think you killed it and you did well? And, and did you think that you could get this far and actually win? Well, I mean, of course I wanted to win and I thought I could win or else I wouldn't have tried, uh, you know, out for the show, but... Um, I didn't realize the creative process that The Voice was gonna allow me to have. Uh, and once I found out that I had that liberty, then it, then things really started to roll for me. Uh, I started to change arrangements and uh, trying to make the songs uh, my songs, you know, as it would be. Uh, and my strategy the whole time was to sing female, uh, great female songs and cover them as a man and change the arrangement. And that was my strategy from the beginning, uh, so. That's one of the only things I've ever thought of that actually worked. Yeah. And a lot of people are comparing you to uh, Chris Stapleton, which is a pretty good person to be compared to. But yeah, right. you do have that amazing soul country voice. Did you always have that, or is that something that you uh, worked on? No, I, I really, uh, I think I really just, my voice has really developed over the last year, year and a half, something like that. I mean, I've always been a singer, but I didn't really know who I was uh, vocally as an artist until, you know, recently. And I'm, I'm really thankful that uh, I was able to recognize that talent and try to figure out how to uh, make it the best that it could be. Now, is it true that you also uh, auditioned, you were on American Idol? I was on American Idol. And, That's crazy. And uh, made to lucky number 13. But I don't know how, because I had no clue about anything. And uh, I was a jerk also. So I told a guy today, if I could go back and meet Sundance Head from American Idol, I'd probably punch him in the mouth. <laughs> God just wasn't very cool, you know, but I thought I knew everything and thought I was the best singer in the world. Of course, looking back, I was pretty horrible. Did it teach you a lot about, you know, being humble and sort of sitting back and, and reanalyzing things and seeing, you know, how many people out there can sing and who are talented? And well, I think it was really my children that did that. Uh, once I had my first son, you know, I tried to be the best dad I could be for him. And I try to teach him the way that he should live in the world and respecting people and, and himself and, you know, just being a good guy. And then I realized uh, I was really learning more from him than I was teaching him, you know. And then I think that's when things started to change for me. And I started to try to live 
as it were, uh, the way that I would like for Levi and uh, my and Percy and Brazos to live. So I just think I just I'm just thankful I had the opportunity to uh, to grow up, you know. And uh, we've been working real hard for the last five years, putting records out independently in Texas and playing all over the state. We've built up a pretty good following back home, and I was able to make money uh, playing music for a living. But I thought we need to take it to another level, and so we tried it for The Voice. And so your original song that's on the top of the charts right now, Darling, Don't Go, was that a song that you wrote before The Voice, or was it written yes, for you? Yes, that's oh. the fourth cut on the, my independent record, Soul Country, which we just released right before the summer back in Texas. Um, and I wrote that for Misty uh, one time when we got in a bad argument about a year or so ago. And uh, I tried to explain to her the way I felt after the argument and tried to write her a letter. And just the communication breakdown was imperative. So I wrote a song and then I, I, put it on, I sent it to her on a phone note and uh, kind of broke the ice. And, <laughs> and thank goodness. So... It worked that time, you know. <laughs> well, I saw her like singing along to it when you sang it on the, the finale. Is it amazing though to you that now so many people have discovered the song and it's getting such great praise? Well, I, I think it's a beautiful song, but you know, it came from a beautiful inspiration, so I could it could only be beautiful. But uh, I asked her first if she was okay with uh, you know me sharing it with the world because. It's a song for her, of course, and she was okay with it. She blessed me and told me to go for it. And uh, she's been uh, she's been really the reason for all of my success and all of my joy, and I, I know that and recognize that. So, I mean, really, she should be here doing this interview probably, but yeah. somebody's got to raise a family. <laughs> I can't do it, yeah. you know. So, But, yeah, it's, it's, it's her ambition and drive is really why why I'm successful at all. Uh, I mean, I've told everybody all along, if, if my wife could sing, she'd probably be taking over the world. But so. She can't sing? <laughs> no, she can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to have someone who supports you and is a, an amazing partner. And I saw her in the audience. She was there pretty much every week, right? Every other week? Yeah, she, no, she, was, yeah, she was there every time. Yeah. Uh, she's really wonderful and... Uh, She's definitely my best friend, soulmate, and I'm just lucky that uh, she stuck by me and she kept telling me to go after it, you know, even whenever I wanted to give up and just go find something else to do. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you, is it going to be weird for you to leave the voice and, and go back home and, and, and go all. back to your day to day life? Or are you super looking forward to it? I'm looking forward to going back home. Yeah. I haven't been home in 10 weeks, uh, I live on the river down there in on the in the woods and uh I can't wait to just get home and take a walk down by the river and I'm going to sit down and just pay attention to what's going on with the animals and listen to the river and focus on what I need to do next which is uh I need to start writing some songs for the record. I've got about 9 songs I've written over the summer just from this experience already, you know, but every song's not a good song. I know how important this record is going to be, so I need to make sure I put the best material that I have on there. Yeah. What was your day-to-day -day like when you were living in L.A. for The Voice? What did you guys do, all you contestants? Did you live together? Or? Well, I, I stayed with Austin also mostly all summer. We were roommates, and then uh, finally when we got in the top 12, they gave us our own rooms, but we still hung out with each other all day until we went to bed. So, um, Yeah, we would just get up every day, and they would pick us up in a bus and take us to do something. And we'd stay there all day till night, and then they'd take us back to the hotel. Really no time to do anything other than, you know, rehearsal and wardrobe and <laughs> and uh, going from here to here and then waiting for hours and then doing something and then go to another location and wait for hours and then do something. <laughs> so I got really good at uh, video games on my phone. Yeah. That's about all I did during, during the downtime. Yeah, and then they just throw you on stage in front of a, you know, an audience of right. millions <laughs> to, to sing and perform. Well, but, you know, I, I didn't really, I haven't really watched the show that much, but I did, I did like sit down and watch it with my wife every once in a while. And on TV, it looks like it's just going down real quick. You know, yeah. you just, they're just singing a song, but I didn't realize everything that went in behind the scenes, you know. It takes all week to, to get to that three-minute, you know, song. 
a lot of preparation, a lot of people behind the, the show and a, a large team of folks that really put everything they have into it throughout the week to make sure that you're successful. So it's really, it's really neat. Well, because they focus a lot on your one-on-one -on -one time with your coach, but then you don't really get to see, you know, you rehearsing with the band and with the cameramen, figuring out what angles. Um, what was the most exciting part for you, though, during that, like, you know, production time before the, the, the week's show? Uh, my favorite part was getting to run through the dress rehearsal with the band. Because every week I was worried about if I knew the lyrics or not, you know, because you, you have to learn a song in like four days. And uh, my memory is just not the best. I've got short term memory from long term abuse, you know. So I didn't know what to do. A lot of times I was freaking out thinking I might just completely get up there and just freeze. But luckily it never happened. But uh, there were certainly times I thought it was. So I spent a lot of times going over lyrics. Um, I would just. Uh, play it acoustically on my on my notepad, and then I would put it on loop and just listen to it till I was sick of it. And then uh, I like to go through the dress rehearsals because it would give me confidence every time we'd go through it, and I'd get get everything correct. And they let you run it about four times, four or five times before the actual show starts. And they even let you run it uh, the day of, like every Monday. You'll go out; they'll do the uh, dress rehearsal, full wardrobe. Same as the show, you know, you'll run the entire show f down to the seconds, uh, where you're going to be, who's going in what order, through the songs, and uh, that really helped me gain a lot of confidence on the, on Mondays, because we'd go through and hammer it out, and, uh, you know, everything would be great, and then you go back, and you just kind of chill in the, in the green room until it's time to go. So, I mean, the voice really gives you everything you need to be successful as a, as a singer and an artist. They really care about you. They have artist development. I mean, you really, uh, if you take advantage of it, then you can, you can get pretty far in the competition. If you, if you go into it and you think you're some kind of badass and you don't need to do any of this stuff, then you get weeded out pretty quick by that, you know, it just naturally happens. So I just paid attention to what everybody said to me. I listened to the people that opened the door for the studios, what they had to say, or uh, we do dry blocking, whatever. Anybody had any advice for me, I, I certainly listened to it, and I appreciate having that conversation with them. And I would kind of ask people uh, random questions, you know, whatever I was thinking. And a lot of times I, I would get the answer that I, that I needed in order to, uh, you know, succeed a little bit further on. Yeah, what did you learn about yourself and your sound, for that matter, through this process? Anything that you, you know, you didn't know before that you discovered? Well, I... Uh, I learned uh, pretty much that I have a very operatic uh, tone in my voice and that I can sustain notes for a weirdly long period of time. I didn't know that before, you know, but uh, it, they, they really want you to hammer that last note out and hold it as long as you can. So one day in uh, rehearsal, I was just joking around, and I, I hit the last note, and, and I held it so long that the band stopped and I like kept going and then one of the producers Chad was looking at me and I just kept holding it as a joke just messing around <laughs> and then uh Trelawney the vocal coach comes over to me she goes Sundance that was amazing <laughs> oh. I was like well I didn't even know I could do that that's a diaphragm yeah, yeah so there. then I don't know if you noticed that as the longer we went on every court and we get to the chorus man I just sing <laughs> runs and hold them forever you know kind of soaring through the sky on these notes and it was really exciting to discover that and then to be able to apply it right away to uh, the songs on the show was was really fun for me. Yeah, was there any was there a note that you didn't know you could hit that you hit on the show? You had some high notes there. No, I can I can sing a I can sing a, a wide register of stuff. Uh, I really need to work on my low voice. I don't have a real good low tone and uh, it's important that I discover that. I've been working on it trying to trying to figure it out. But it's just, it doesn't come very natural to me uh, to get low. Or like Christian Cuevas, I don't know, a lot of people doesn't, don't know because he sings so high throughout the whole competition, but he can really sing really low, like unnormally low, unnaturally low, and uh, it sounds really good. And I tried to ask him how he did it, you know, he tried to explain it to me, but I just sound like a whack whenever, I, you know, it just sounds so fake. So I know I need to go work on that low tone in my voice and try to figure out how to, how, how to get it going because... I really want to have all the tools, you know. Right now I feel like I'm about 50% as a vocalist 
an artist, and uh, I want to get close as I can to being 100%, you know, so I've got a lot of work to do still. Yeah, what is your goal, uh, you know, for the future, for a future album? Uh, what do you want it to sound like? What do you want the style to be? Well, I call it soul country, basically. I love R&B, and uh, I love uh, Motown, but also like uh, like 70s country, early 80s country. Uh, so if I could marry those two things, that would be incredible, and that's, that's what I'm going to try to do on the record. I'm a huge uh, fan of, you know, Tina Turner, uh, uh, man, uh, James Brown, all of all of the greats. I love all that stuff and uh, blues. I love the blues. I love uh, the Delta blues. And I just want to make a record that's full of music. You know, I don't want anything to be auto tuned. I don't want any computers. I just want to have a real record with wooden wire and actual instruments. And uh, I just want to try to make an ambient album that that brings happiness to people when they hear it. That's really important to me. And uh, something that anyone could listen to and come together over. Yeah, you got to get Kiss on that album. Let me tell you, that was a cool performance. That was crazy, man. You know, awesome. rehearsing with him, I got so nervous I couldn't remember any lines or anything. It was like the first time I was alone with a girl. I just, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. Uh, I'm sure I was an idiot. You met some huge stars though. Like I know Dolly Parton. There was Garth Brooks, who uh, not uh, yeah, uh, Tim McGraw and Garth Brooks and Faith Hill. Did you freak out over anyone? Was was there anyone you met that was you were you know? I know you mentioned Alicia Keys, but yeah, Alicia Keys is the only one that really freaked me out because <laughs> she's she's so pretty. But I was I was really into her records and I, I really wanted to sing like her really bad. Uh, I, I I practiced all her runs uh, whenever her records came out early, and I thought her sound was so fresh. It was you know a throwback to me to the way things should should be a really organic record. Um, really beautiful melodies and songs, and she could play the piano really good, and, and uh, I really admired her. So to have the opportunity to, to do her song, I was really excited about that, and it was really important to me to make sure that I didn't cover it. I wanted to I wanted to remake it, and I wanted her to really approve it, you know, it was really important. And so when I was singing that song on stage, and I looked at her, and she looked at me, and I could, I could tell that right then we were having like an actual connection and she was proud of me, and she loved the way the song sounded. It really made me feel great, and you know, I think I gained a lot of confidence from that performance uh, going forward. Oh yeah, that was an awesome moment. That was insane. I'm jealous that you got to hang out with Alicia Keys. Anybody else? And Miley. What is Miley like? Uh, you know, not in front of the cameras. She seems. She's wild. exactly the same. <laughs> she has too much energy, and uh, she's just really happy all the time. She's. She's got a negative thing from people in the press. I don't think they realize how cool she really is, you know. She does some crazy stuff, but, I mean, every entertainer does that. Yeah, got it. Uh, so, I mean, and, I, and like, I told her, and I'm sure everybody knows this, uh, Nashville, if she decided to go back to country music, Nashville would take her back in a heartbeat. It wouldn't even be a question. So, I mean, but she's doing what she wants to do, and if she's happy, then, I mean, really, no one can really say anything about it. And then before I throw it to the audience, which one of your fellow contestants uh, was your favorite, if you had anybody's voice who stuck out to you? My absolute favorite was Way. Uh, I think she's an amazing artist. I know that she's going to be famous. She's so young. Uh, her ceiling is through the roof. Uh, she, can, she can only get better. When she did that song, uh, Don't Rain On My Parade, it, it absolutely blew my mind. I saw it in rehearsal, and I, I just couldn't imagine how she could... Uh, First of all, remember all the lyrics. It's like, it's like four pages of lyrics. The first thing I told Blake is, dude, I need like four lines and a verse and a chord. You know what I mean? Please don't give me anything hard, you know? Like we were going to learn Turn the Page by Bob Seger, and he sent me the words, and I go, dude, I'm not doing that. He, didn't re he doesn't repeat a single thing. Uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Night Moves. Uh, so, yeah, I think Way's going to be, she's going to be really successful probably pretty soon. Her dad, Mac, is one of the sweetest guys in the whole world, and he's, he's got her back 100%. And uh, uh, I was trying to see if I could get them to come up here with me, uh, uh, you know, to do this interview. I just thought it'd be neat to, if she could be here too, but we couldn't work that out. But I certainly support her, and I voted for her every time Aww. that we had a chance. I thought that I was going to lose to either Billy or Way, and so I really wanted Way to win because, uh, I mean, I love Billy. Don't get me wrong, but 
I just thought that Way would be able to do more with it. She's younger and she could, you know, afford the opportunity and grow immensely from it, you know. Where me, I'm going to be 50 in like you know, 15 years, you know. So that's still 15 years, buddy. Come on, Sundance. <laughs> Don't start counting now. You yeah. got plenty of time. <laughs> Speaking of Sundance, what a cool name, right? I mean, how did how did how did your parents think of that? I'm not really sure what they were on that night. But <laughs> they named me Sundance, and I had to learn how to fight out of grade school. Aww. Especially, I don't know if you guys remember My Little Pony, Megan and Sundance, but that came out in like 84, 85, <laughs> and I had to fight every day until like <laughs> seventh grade. Aww. Well, it fits you. I really do right. like the name Sundance. Thank you. I'll name my kid Sundance. Just I've asked my dad a lot of times uh, why he named me that, and depends on how much he's drinking what answer he gives me. So <laughs> I still really don't know. All right, who's going to ask a question? Here we go. Hi, it's great having you here. I wanted to know, um, you touched on it a little bit, um, what music influences did you have growing up, and then what are you listening to right now? Well, I basically grew up listening to uh, a lot of jazz and swing, uh, Motown, all the Motown era music, uh, all the great black entertainers, basically, vocalists, male or female, I tried to study and and wanted to sing just like them. Uh, and then uh, as far as the 70s go, probably Al Green, uh, then Michael Jackson, and then uh, country, it was probably uh, George Jones, probably my favorite country singer. Uh, so, I mean, my influences are all over the place, really, but I think that's one of the reasons that uh, I'm able to attack different genres of music and be really effective in making them uh, sound like my own music. Yeah, what were the, some of the songs? What do you listen to now, currently? Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. <laughs> um, currently, my playlist is probably anything Otis Redding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm I'm really into Otis Redding right now. So anything that uh, has to do with him, I'm listening to. Or uh, Percy Sledge. Cool. All right, who is up next? How you doing, Sundance? How you doing? Good. What was your first feeling uh, in, in front of the judges? Like your first audition? What, what went through your, your mind and everything? And also, who would you like to collaborate with your next album coming up? Well, my, the first, uh, my first thought was I just need to get a chair to turn around. I wanted Blake to turn around, and when he did, I was very excited about that. Uh, and as far as collaboration, there's a lot of people I'd like to work with. Uh, as far as female goes, probably my top three females would be, of course, Beyonce, because yeah. she's a badass. That'd be cool. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Crow, I think, would be awesome to work with. I really love the way that she writes music. Uh, and uh, uh, Alicia Keys, for sure. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to bring that one. I was going to say Molly, because Alicia was so obvious, but I don't, I'm not sure I could really, we'd have to, I don't know, you know, hey, I'm married, you know, first of all, but... <laughs> She's so beautiful. I don't know if I could help it, you know. She married two Sundance. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe we could work something out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I and as far as uh, the male uh, vocalists go, I'd like to work with uh, maybe Sturgill Simpson or uh, Chris Stapleton. Uh, George Strait, I think, just because anything he cuts is solid gold, you know. Uh, John Legend would be cool to work with. Man, I really like his tone and stuff. Uh, he was on the finale too, right? He was. Did you get to meet him? I, I didn't get a chance to meet him. We that awesome. we were passing at different times, you know. Uh so I really didn't get a chance to meet him. I don't know if y'all remember this old cat named D'Angelo. Yeah. Play piano. Yeah. I re I'm really into his music, man. I think it'd be cool to do a collaboration with him on a couple of tunes. That'd be cool. Man, that's like a dream collaboration list. Here we go. Hey son. Um so I was wondering if do you get any feedback from your kids about your music, and uh, uh, would you want them to follow the path? Well, path? yeah, certainly I would, but, I mean, uh, it's really not, it's a dangerous life, you know. You're either successful or you're a carny, basically, and <laughs> I've had the great opportunity to be both. So, uh, sure, I would like them to play music, but I don't force anything on them. I let them discover it on their own. Uh, and as far as winning the voice, I mean, the first thing my son asked me, we're on stage still. I said, hey, son, are you proud? He goes, yeah, Dad. Can I get a motorcycle now? <laughs> I mean, I really don't think he cares either way, you know. He did tell me he's getting all the chicks at school, you know. Yeah. 
he's 10 years old. That's about the time the playground really gets different, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's so, hey, man, just stay focused at school, you know. You don't need a girlfriend. That's awesome. Well, I think we're out of time, but thank you so much for being sure. here. We cannot wait to hear the music you come out with. But thank enjoy you. the holidays, some relaxation. Yeah, y'all have a Merry Christmas, and thank y'all for coming out and hanging out with me. Guys.